Twosum is the most popular problem on lead code and even though I have already solved it in the past, I am doing it again. The reason you can find it at the very end of the video. The lead code problem we are going to solve now is called two sum. This is the number one problem on the lead code and we can see that this one is an easy problem and also the most like problem on lead code. Let's understand the statement. Basically we are given an integer array nums and we are also given an integer called target. Now we need to return the indices of the two numbers within the nums array such that they are the sum of target. So basically they add up to the value target and uh, we are guaranteed that there is always going to be one solution and we can return these indices in any order. So let's try to understand this with an example. We are given an input array nums over here and we can notice the values are 15, 7, 2 and 11 and we are also given target value to be 9. Now in this example we can see that the 7 and 2 sums up to target value number 9. Now if we see the index positions of the 7, 1, um, sorry 7 and 2, uh, they are located at basically 1 and 2 position. So we can return the answer as 1 and 2 or we can also return 2 and 1 whichever like sequence we want but basically this is what we need to return. Now let's understand that what are the different ways we can actually find the sum of these two values. So first let's understand the brute force approach. Basically uh, for the same example let's say the values we are given we are going to try every single permutation and combination. So what we will do is currently this value is 15 and the target we wants to make is 9 okay. So this value is 15 so we cannot use any other value to basically form the target value as, uh, as 9 so we can just ignore this case okay. Now this value is 7. So because this value is 7 the total target we wants to build is 9 so what we'll do is we'll do 9 minus 7. So we will check that if the value 2 is present inside the remaining array or not. And lucky for us the value 2 is present so we can just return basically the index positions of this these two. Now notice that um, in the brute force approach what we are essentially doing is for every single character in the worst case we might have to iterate over all the remaining characters to see if any particular value is present or not. Let's take an example that if this value was to 1 then we would have to check that whether 8 is present. So for that we might have to basically go over all of them. So the time complexity would have been big of n square that is a bad time complexity. Now let's see that if there is any particular way we can improve upon that and the answer is yes. We If we do sorting basically things would become slightly better and easier. Uh, how? Let's understand that uh, for the same example if the values are 15, 7, 2 and 11 once again if we sort these values we would be left with values 7 uh, sorry 2, 7, 11 and 15. Now uh, we are at value number 2 okay. So notice that if uh, the target we are going to we want to generate is 9. If we already have value s2 which means uh, if we do 9 minus 2 the answer becomes 7. Now all we need to do is to check that whether 7 is present inside the remaining array as, or not same as our brute force approach. But in this case because we know that this is already sorted instead of using linear search where we are iterating over all of these values one by one we can use binary search and that would help us alleviate a lot of questions but because in the binary search remember that we will find the middle value so let's say we find middle value is 11 in this case and from 11 we know the value we are trying to build is 7 so the, even if there were like 100 elements on the right of 11 they will all be smaller or sorry greater than 7 so we cannot use them so we will just ignore all the entire right portion and only limit our search to the remaining piece and we would be able to find the remaining value in essentially log n time which is exceptionally fast. So this if we see like the sorting approach of sorting the original input array things becomes quicker um, and we can actually solve this problem in big O of n log n time and this is the time to basically sort the given input plus log n time to find any particular character. Uh, but the thing is we ob generically we can just write it big O of n log n as the overall solution. Now the question is is there a way to do things quicker and the answer is yes we can even do things faster if we use an additional data structure in this case and uh, let's see what are the considerations for us to understand any particular data structure. Number one thing is whenever we see a value 
we are trying to basically determine that what is going to be the remainder. So in order to quickly look up that do we have that remainder or have we already passed that remainder or not, uh, what we can do is we can use a hash map in this case. Now notice hash map contains two properties. First, well, first thing is a key and second thing is a, an appropriate value. Now as part of the key, we would put whatever the array uh, item that we currently have. So let's say that we are given uh, once again this array as an example. Okay. Now in this case, we once again need to return the target value of let's say 9. Uh, so now in this case, uh, what the algorithm we are going to use is first we'll iterate over any particular character inside the given nums array. For that character, we will see that what is the remainder value we are trying to generate. So for this value number one, we know that the remainder value should be eight. The question is, is eight present inside the hash map or not? If it is not present, that's it. We simply add this value one saying that it could be potentially uh, a match for some future target value that we are trying to generate and continuously we will keep on doing that. So as a key, we will add value one over here and as its appropriate value, we are going to store the index position. So index position for this one is going to be zero. So we will store value zero over here. Now let's repeat the same operation. Now next value is value number seven. So for if we already have a seven to be part of the two sum that we are trying to generate, we will need to have seven, nine minus seven, which means value number two as part of the hash map. But currently hash map does not have value number two. So what we'll do is we'll simply add value number seven with its index position as one. Same way we have value number three. If three were to be part of the answer, we, we need to find value number six. Six is not present inside the hash map. So we will simply add three over here with its appropriate subsequent value that is index position number two. Now we are at value number two. For two, we need to find value number seven. And lucky for us, seven is present within this hash map and we already know its subsequent value is one. And we are, since we are already at two, we know the index position of two as well. So in this case, we can return the answer as let's say three and one, or we can also return like one and three, whatever we want. But basically this is the index position of the values that basically sums up to total value number nine. And this is the fastest way to solve this problem. Now let's analyze the time and space complexity. Time complexity is going to be much faster big O of n. Why? Because we are iterating over all of these elements just once and we are coming, coming up with the solution. Because remember, searching that whether any particular value is present inside the hash map or not happens in big O of one time, which is significantly faster than everything else. Let's analyze the space complexity. So space complexity is going to be big of n as well because we have to use an additional hash map to store the results. But needless to say, this is much quicker than both our brute force and also our sorting approach. So now let's see the coding approach for this one. So the coding solution is quite straightforward. First, we are going to initialize a hash map to store all the values and their index positions. Then we are going to iterate over the given input array nums. And for each of the array, we are going to calculate that what is the remainder value in a variable called complement. Then we are going to check that if that complement is already present inside the hash map or not, which we can do in big O of one time. If the value is present, we simply return uh, a new array that contains the value of the comp the, that particular key and the current ith position. These are the two index positions. If we do not find that value, we simply uh, add this current number that we are iterating over within our hash map using map.put. And uh, in the end, we simply return an empty array if no solution is fine found, but this wouldn't happen because uh, in the problem, we are already told that there is always going to be exactly one answer. We are just putting this return statement. So we don't get into a compile time error. Okay. Let's try to run this code. Okay. Seems like our solution is working as expected. Let's submit this code. And we beat nearly 99% of all the other solutions, which is awesome. And uh, in terms of memory usage, we can improve if we use some other solution. But this is also needless to say a very good time and space complexity. And this is the most popular problem. So you must know it by heart. Uh, once again, the coding solution is present in our GitHub repository. So feel free to go and check it out from there. Thank you. So you guys must be wondering that 
since I've already solved two sum problem twice, why am I doing it again? Uh, well, I was doing it for a free code camp course that I was working on. And for that, I needed like a better version of the two sum problem, uh, better in the sense of uh, visually and uh, I guess audio -cally or or better with better audio and better video. So that's why I created it. And I was like, hey, let me also upload uh, upload it on my channel so people can enjoy and get the best out of it. So hope you enjoy this video.